Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to episode 7 of the Jesse Lee Podcast. I hope everybody is doing well out there in internet land. Um, pretty crazy world we're living in, and I, uh, I've been watching even more movies about, uh, Donald Trump and also just Saudi Arabia and his ties to them. There's a really good movie on Showtime that just came out about that on Kingdom of Silence. Um, also on Showtime is a really good mini series called The Toby Rule, which is obviously all about James Toby, the former. FBI director, and as a really good cast, uh, Jeff Daniels plays him, and uh, a bunch of other really good people, Holly Hunter, and it's really good, and it also, like, shows you all the things that the FBI were investigating before Trump fired him, and a lot of it was him himself and uh, all the ties he had to Russia and all that. So, uh, really interesting and worth checking out. The guy is basically a stooge uh, to any dictator that you can find that is willing to support him, and it's sad. Uh, anyway, uh, what else? Oh yeah, Roger Waters. A uh, new concert movie, Us and Them, just came out on Blu-ray, really amazing. You should really check that out if you haven't. Um, the Metallica s and 2 album and Blu-ray is out, and I would watch the movie if you can, because watching them and the symphony together is pretty fucking incredible as well. Um, that's it off the top of my head for, like, new stuff. Um, but the main thing that this episode is focusing on is really awesome and excited. It's my very first guest, and it is the bass player um, one of my very favorite bands in the world, as you know, if you've listened, fucking weird. Papa Dave Drywitz, the awesomest bass player, one of the best out there, uh, the guy is so funky and groovy and knows how to play for any kind of style. He's been with William for over, Jesus, 23 years now, and uh, they're still killing it, and I assume they will be killing it again once bands are able to play live again. Who knows? Maybe they'll uh, do another All the Quest Live thing or something like that soon. I really hope they do, they should. And uh, if you're looking for new William material, Make sure you check out the Dean Lee Band. Um, they put out two studio albums in the last few years, both of which are great. It's definitely more of a browner, fucked up side of weird. Um, but with lots of guitar solos, which is great, because Mickey's amazing and never really gets to go off as hard as he does live as on the studio albums, but he does on his solo albums, so that's really cool. And then uh, Aaron G. Moyen put out uh, an album it's uh, about seven, eight years old now called Freeman, which is amazing. That's his last name, and he's always been more focused on the pop classic rock melody side of things, and that album is no different. It sounds like early Paul McCartney a lot of the time. It's amazing. And John Lennon, and it's just great. I can't recommend those albums highly enough. 
Anyway, getting back to Dave, um, he used to uh, be involved with a lot of bands in the New Jersey, New York area, and we talked a lot about his history and how he got into reading it, how he met those guys, and uh, we just talked about different memories we had of different shows and when we met and when they played in Santa Cruz and uh, all kinds of stuff. Music we into and albums we love and all that kind of shit. Another band that he's in, which you should really check out, is a band called Joe Russo. That's all you SSO apostrophe S. Joe Russo's Almost Dead, and they are a Grateful Dead cover band, but they are way better than the average Dead cover band. Um, I've heard a bunch and they are the only one that I actually listen to actively because they are all amazing jazz musicians and indie rock musicians, and they, like, all, even though they like the dead, they weren't, like, obsessed and, like, big deadheads themselves, but they found the music interesting enough that they thought that they could bring more of a jazz rock prod vibe to it, and that's actually what they do, and, I mean, I would even argue that as great as the dead are, these guys are better musicians than the dead ever were. I mean, at least in a technical sense, not overall, maybe. But, you know, it's awesome, and Dave is amazing in it. And they have a ton of live shows that you can watch on YouTube and other places. Uh, Dave mentions that in the interview, and, um... Yeah, I'm just so excited that, of all people, I got to have one of the members of my very favorite band, at least one of my top three favorite bands of all time, uh, be my first guest. And thank you, Dave, so much for doing that. And uh, I think everybody's done a little did it a lot. And uh, yeah, check it out. It's awesome. And... I'll see you next time around. Adios. All right. Well, I am so happy and excited to have my good buddy, Dave Drylitz, bass player of Lean and Joe Luzer's Almost Dead, as my very first guest on the Jesse Lane podcast. So that is so cool, Dave. Uh, thank you so, so much for being on my show. It's my honor. I didn't realize I was the first guest. Yeah, man. Yeah. Hi. Yeah, it's a trip, and as you can see, I've got my camera all set up in my bed here, so I can yeah. do it all from bed. That's how I do the podcast, too. Nice. Did you uh, check it out at all? My what? Have you listened to any of my podcasts? Oh, no, actually, I haven't gotten a chance to check them out. That's cool. I thought I would just... Uh... I thought I would just go for this and then check them out. For sure, man. Well, cool. Well, uh, let me just ask you, how are you doing? And um, how are you doing with the whole, you know, staying at home thing? And do you miss playing live and all that? Yeah, not much playing live, but uh, I've been doing a lot of practicing. I cool. practice down by a brook in, up here in Vermont. Oh, wow. That sounds awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I bet. I bet. All, all the waters run dry. <laughs> oh, wow, really? Is that unusual? Or? No, that's pretty usual for the fall. I uh -huh. guess. It all comes back after the snow. Cool. Mud, they call it mud season. <laughs> so uh, I wanted to ask you, because I don't know a lot about this um how did you 
first start getting into playing bass? Was that the first instrument that you started on? Or, uh, no, actually, uh, no, I started playing trumpet. My, my mom and dad are musicians. They still play oh. at 80 and 85. Wow. But my, my mom played. I, I was playing trumpet. I grew up. That was my first instrument. And I played trumpet in school and stuff. And then um, my mom started playing electric bass in addition to tuba. She was a tuba player. Wow. And um, at that point, I started listening to more rock and roll. I was listening to the Beatles and Led Zeppelin. I was around 12 and she had a bass and I just started playing along to records, really. Yeah, yeah. Well, you certainly have some good uh, stuff to talk to you and Paul McCartney and John Paul Jones. Yeah, those are... Those are my guys, yeah. That's what yeah, is that, is that like your favorite kind of stuff? Absolutely, yeah. I, I love jazz. I love experimental, weird, avant-garde music, but... Uh, yeah, me too. I, really, I, I like to everything, but uh, I just did a uh, top 10 classic rock albums podcast. And oh, I, I saw that. Yeah. I saw that I, you mentioned that. Yeah, I and I put Abbey Road at number one. Oh, right on. Yeah, what's your favorite Beatles album? I know it's kind of hard to pick. All of them. No, uh, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, pretty much everything past Love of Soul is, like, amazing. Yeah, well. I mean, even... Well, even the so. early stuff. <laughs> yeah, the Beatles are amazing. And uh, I think it's funny when people say they're overrated because I don't think they are. I mean, they really, like, changed rock and roll as far as we know rock and roll. And uh, it's awesome. That's true. <laughs> yeah, they kind of ruined rock and roll for everybody. <laughs> I know, right? Cause it in, in a way. Pretty hard to touch in the that. Best way, but. <laughs> Although I would say if there's any band that comes close to that, it would actually be Reed. It a uh, Reed in terms of eclecticness, and I don't know. I actually was hanging out with uh, the lead singer of Screaming Trees. Uh, Mark, uh, God, what's his name? Mark. Anyway, and it was out of Tweeds of the Stone Age show. Uh oh. And he actually said that, in his opinion, Reed was the new Beatles. So there you go. <laughs> well, I, you know, I, I always felt that even before I joined the band, I always felt. Were, were you a big fan of them before you got them? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Like, like from the beginning? Like, did you hear Don Reed Satan when it came out? Or? Mm -hmm. well, I, knew, I, I met those guys before that. Really? Before, I met them right after God Wayne Satan came out. And we did a... I was friends with some guys who were all friends, Chris Harford and Andrew Weiss. Oh, yeah, yeah. And we, we played a... Well, we had a band... The, I had a band with Chris Harford and my buddy Greg DiGizu, the greatest prolific songwriter. And um, he's written almost a thousand songs. Wow. You know, Greg, Greg, Greg and Chris and I had this band. And um, what was the name of it? Well, that was called The Green Lip Muscles. Okay. And then one day we were rehearsing for a show and, um, you know, the, the Ween guys came over to, to Chris's house. He was living with Andrew Weiss, and it was in the Zion House of Flesh, <laughs> where they recorded God Ween Satan. Okay. So um, we had this big jam at the house, and then we told we, we said, well, we have a gig on Saturday, and we got to rehearse for it. If you guys want to do the gig, um, then then we'll keep jamming. But if you guys if you guys can't make it Saturday, then we got to get to our practice. So they said, they said, uh, we're free Saturday. We'll come do the show. And it was at the Court Tavern. And it was in, it was in 1991. Okay. 
So it's called, they call it wean lip muscles, but yeah. Uh-huh. And, uh, yeah, that was a fun, that was when I met those guys. And, um, and then, uh, and then we, we would occasionally jam or play with Chris Harford together or hang out. Uh-huh. And then um, they invited Instant Death to open for them on the Chocolate and Cheese Tour. Oh, okay. That was amazing. Yeah. We had a great time. I got to see them play. I think we did 15, 18 shows with them. Awesome, really man. I bet. Yeah. Were, I... That was band with Andrew. That uh... was like... <laughs> that band at the time was like was really like Zeppelin. Yeah, so like four hours long. Oh, I know. I got like the Rotten Cheese compilation yeah. from that from that whole tour, and that stuff's amazing. They yeah, were, they were just so heavy at that point. It was so heavy. Yeah, Andrew, it was so heavy. It was. Uh, and then he went. He went on to the. Was that after? Or before he was in the Rollins band? That was after. Okay. Yeah. So just, he was in the Rollins band up to about 91. Okay. Yeah. 92. That, and then, uh, yeah, that and then was, he, went, he, he went and played with Yoko Ono for a while. Holy shit. That's so cool. With Sean Lennon and Yoko. That was the band. Oh, wow. And, and then he, he did he did a record he did some a record with the Butthole Surfers. Oh, cool, did, man! Wow, on Electric Larry Land. Wow, talk yeah. about talk about being involved with a lot of cool shit. Like right. that early Rollins band stuff is so good and like it's such oh, a it's so heavy. It, and and it's like a precursor to jazz metal, which hadn't really been like. Happened yet at that point? It really was. Yeah. It was really uh, ahead of its time. Very I saw that ahead band of its time. a lot. Oh, nice. I never got to see them. I got to see uh, Henry Rollins a little later on, uh, and then I saw him like do Smoke of Wood a lot. But I, right. never, I never got to see his band, though. Unfortunately, I would have liked to. Uh, and I was, a yeah, little, I was a little too young for. Black flag, <laughs> but man, he was involved well, with a lot. Well, not bad. I mean, they only play. Go ahead. Yeah, they only. Uh, yeah, went till about ninety-one. Uh, the end of silence. Rollins' big first record, like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It was on a major label, and and it had that song, the uh, low self opinion. That was the jam. Of it. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, that was on MTV all the time. But that's yeah. that's really awesome that he got to play with Reed and Yoko Ono. I mean, uh, I'm actually... He's also producing bands in uh, Mexico and South America. He's wow. Won Latin, he, he's what? won some Latin Grammys. Holy shit. I, I didn't know that. Let There's a Mexican band called Cafe Tacuba. Oh, I know those guys. Huge. Those guys are awesome. They actually kind of yeah, sound. Awesome. Yeah, they kind of sound like me, actually. Right. Well, that's maybe because Andrew produced, or maybe they they liked Ween and contacted Andrew to produce them. That so, makes a lot of sense. <laughs> and it, yeah, Andrew's won Latin Grammys from them and stuff. He's, uh, yeah. And I'm a big Yoto Ono fan, too. A lot of people, a lot of my friends don't get it, but uh, I've always liked her music a lot. I mean, I feel like she was kind of ahead of the curve with, like, the kind of stuff that Mike Patton is doing, like, these days. Absolutely. Yeah, totally, man. Very experimental, very punk rock. Very punk rock. Punk rock I got before to see. punk rock existed. Yeah, that was really that that that's the Yoko stuff is some pretty severe punk it's, rock. It's it's intense shit. Totally, they were man. breaking barriers there. Yeah, <laughs> I got to see the band with Andrew with Yoko, and that was amazing. So good. So and that good. was Sean. And Sean was in the band. It was incredible. Yeah, they that- really. Have, have you heard the uh, Toy Girl Wedding Delirium? The new stuff that Sean Wedding is. Oh, sure. 
with West Actually, Radio. Yeah. Actually, well, well, with the the Dean Ween group did a bunch of shows opening for those guys. So. Oh, nice! I didn't know so, that. Yeah, one uh, out east here. One was up in New York State. One was at a festival in in Ohio, and one was uh, one was in in New York at the at the Capitol Theater in Portchester. Awesome! Are those guys pretty awesome live? Oh yeah. So it's a it's a it's like a classic rock band. Yeah, it's like uh, very heavy. Awesome. Yeah, they could, at, they could have been at the Fillmore in 1972. I, yeah, that's that's what I liked a lot about the new album. It is it kind yeah. of sounds like Sean it is like finally not afraid to sound like his dad, and it's yeah, really. They did. They were doing a couple of Beatles tunes. They did one. They did. They did. Um, Tomorrow never knows. Tomorrow never knows. Yeah, it was amazing. Awesome! I bet, man. Well, I, did yes, I think they did a Yes song too. Holy I shit! Did. I'm a huge Prod fan, so. Oh yeah, that's that's my favorite. That's one of my favorite bands. Yes. They did, um, Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I, uh, yeah. It's, it's all fragile. I, I yeah, yeah, you know. I, I don't know what you mean. Yeah, but, yeah, yes, it's fucking great. I love yes so much. Yeah, 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 y
Glenn was playing, we would play with them when they would do live shows. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I was just about to say that 99 uh, show that you guys did at the Saint is like probably my favorite uh, mm -hmm. show of all time, if I had to pick <laughs> one. I mean, wow. it's, it's amazing. It's like four and a half hours. There's so many. I think Mickey had a broken arm. Really? I think he was in his arm was in the cast. He broke his hand playing basketball. I think I heard something about that. And you know what? It did. It didn't matter. Yeah, obviously <laughs> not. Do you remember that show? I remember it never ended. <laughs> yeah. It on and on. Yeah, it sure did. Yeah, but that, I think Aaron did the, the Donovan's first. There was a mountain at some point. Yeah, and you like started it out with the river by Spring right. State. Yes, he started yeah. with the river. Yeah, so good, man. So good. Because it got like super heavy and spacey. Uh, yep. I think you guys did the lift at one point. Did and, the rift. Yeah. Which oh, was we, we never played the riff. It was, all, it was like only a Jimmy Wilson thing. Yeah, that's what I thought. And yeah. Albino Sunburn Girl was another one. Maybe that was like a Jimmy Wilson thing. But we did Albino Sunburn Girl in that Green Lip Muscles show. Oh, wow. In awesome. there's, a tape, there's a tape of that somewhere. I'll have to there's, try to find that, yeah. It's it's up there. It's up. It's on YouTube or somewhere in the archive. Maybe archive.com. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but we did we did the Stallion Part Three before, and this is before those records came out. I think so he, I think know. I think he did the Stallion Part Four actually at that show. Yeah. At that show it was three. I don't think four was written yet. <sighs> Really? Oh, 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 oh uh, at the at the ninety nine show. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha. I'm talking about the ninety one show. I gotcha. I, I gotcha. <laughs> um, well, you know, I, I was just gonna say that uh, another show that is really dear to my heart was the first show I ever saw you guys at was uh, in nineteen ninety seven on that. Ballast tour in San Francisco at the Warfield. Do you remember yeah. that show? Totally. That was my first. Uh, that was my first tour, and we were we had done a we had done some touring in the summer, but that was our cross country. We had gone cross country. That was the longest tour I think I'd ever been on. because ah. we went cross country, and that took about two weeks, maybe less, maybe a week, and then. We played in San Francisco at the Warfield, and then we played in LA, and then we flew to New Zealand the day after that. Wow. And then we went to New Zealand, we went to Australia, we went to Japan. Wow, that's insane. It was insane. And then we ended in Hawaii. Holy shit. And opened for Los Lobos. Oh, that's so cool. Mickey and I stayed in Hawaii for a few days, and we went to see Don Ho. <laughs> how did you? How did you not stay in Hawaii a few days? Right. I love Hawaii. Hawaii is like my spiritual home away from home. I've been there like five times. I've been really lucky. Nice. Yeah. Lucky you. I know. I've been yeah. there a few times, and it's always been incredible. Yeah, but yeah, I remember at that San Francisco show, I remember Aaron saying during the concert that it was the biggest show they'd ever played at that point. Oh, the Warfield one? Yeah. Uh, every, sorry, every, we got a little uh, a, a fire going on here. Oh, shit. <laughs> I can edit it out. No worries. <laughs> Uh, the fire department just showed. Just showed yeah, that. yeah, no big deal, right? <laughs> yeah, the, whole, the whole house burns up. No big right. deal. Why? Right, I'll be just a really podcast. Totally. 
but yeah, that show was amazing for me because I had only heard the albums up to that point, and something about seeing Reem live just like changed my life, to be honest. Like hearing those songs in a live environment, um, they just sounded so much more full and like real rock songs. And um, it was a really long show. It was like three hours and 40 minutes. And I think you guys even pulled out uh, LMLYP at the end. Nice. Yeah, it was That great. was a good... Those were good times. Uh, that was really, for me, it was incredible because it was my first tour with them. I can only imagine. So, must, I mean, you probably had never played shows that big ever before. Like, no, I, mean, I, was in a, I was in a band before uh, Wing, and it's called Tiny Lights. And we, we made nine records and toured like crazy. Really? Um, was it a Zappa band? I, I asked as a band. That's a good question. Everybody always asks. <laughs> um, no, but it was it was more like um, it was almost more like like a psychedelic folk, like Fairport Convention. Oh, okay. Um, beat Sly and the Family Stone or something. Oh, that sounds that sounds very unique. <laughs> it was cool. Yeah, it was a cool band. We had. Um, we had Jane, a cello player, who actually huh. ended up playing on some Ween records. Okay. She's on She's Your Baby. And she ah. played with, uh, she's played with everybody from the 10,000 Maniacs, Bruce Springsteen, played with Lou Reed for years. Wow. She was, really in, cool. um, really cool. she was in the Lounge Lizards. So Awesome. Cool. Yeah, the Austin Lounge Lizards. And Indigo Girls. She was okay. Indigo Girls cool, years. cool. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, you know, when I was getting ready to do this interview, I was just kind of thinking of, like, my favorite shows over the years, and another one that stands out for me, I wasn't there, uh, was the uh, 2000 Austin show that you guys put the live album out for. <laughs> and, uh, I forget if it was the... I don't know, one of those shows, there's a video recorded, and it's the one that has the LMLYP, where you guys did like a 40-minute LMLYP, and uh, man, you and Glenn and Claude all did like amazing solos on that. That that bass solo that you did on that, man, you, I've never seen you go off that hard before. Wow, I have to check it out. I don't. Have you listened to that or seen that video in a while? No. Oh man, I checked yeah. it out maybe when that record came out, but I haven't heard that. I th before. I think it's on YouTube, and uh, yeah, you should check it out because you like just turned up your fucking amps and just fuzzed it the fuck out, and uh, you <laughs> you looked like you were having a really good time. Those were good times, yeah. Yeah, man. And then uh, how about the Santa Cruz show? Do you remember the first Santa Cruz show, the one that I set up at uh, Palookaville? Oh, you did that. I did. I didn't realize that you set that up. Oh, that's where is it, that's where we met, I think. Yeah, I think I it is. Do we meet at the Warfield? No. We we might I think we might have met in ninety nine at the Warfield. Or okay. Two, or two thousand, one of those. Cause I made oh, and Aaron it, smashed the guitar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I made it to most of the San Francisco shows yeah. uh, until you guys started playing in Santa Cruz. Cause that's my that hometown. Palooka, that Palookaville show was the last show there ever, wasn't it? Yeah, it, it, close? it was one of the very last. It might have been the last. It was very close to the end. Yeah, yeah. It shut down then, I, months later. I got to see. I thought uh, I, I remember it being, but the night before we had the night off, and Dick Dale was playing. Oh, and cool. Aaron and I went to see Dick Dale that night. Nice. Incredible. Yeah. yeah it was 
was that in San Francisco or Santa Cruz or? No, that was at Palookaville. Oh, at Palookaville. That was in Santa Cruz at Palookaville. Awesome. Yeah, you know, that club was... Perfect place to see Dick Dale. It was an awesome place. It was really a bubble when it shut down because I got to see, like, Love and Rockets, AFI, um, Mr. Bundle, like, a lot of... Yeah, a lot of amazing bands played the um have you, right. ever, have you ever heard of the Santa Cruz band called Astronosphere? Like I don't it, think so. Should I check them out? Oh you definitely should. Um Astratosphere? Yeah, like Eric like, Estrada. Like Eric Estrada, okay. Exactly. Yeah. Astratosphere. Yeah. But I look for that. Yeah, you should come over and check them out. They're from Santa Cruz, and um, they put out, like, four albums, and um, it's, like, instrumental prod that there's a little bit of singing, but mostly instrumental, and it's a mix of, like, gypsy music and metal and surf and, like, all this, like, crazy shit. I think you really like it a lot. I'll check it out. Yeah, I yeah. Like I like their name. Yeah, it's a cool name, huh? Yeah, they they broke up about 10, 12 years ago, but there's some talk of them getting back together. We'll see if that actually happens. Uh, right. So, uh, of, what's that? I was going to say, we did a lot of a lot of playing in Santa Cruz at the at the Catalyst mostly. Well, I think you did one show at the Catalyst, and then you guys played at the Civic after that. The Civic Auditorium. It was oh. a lot bigger. Oh yeah, right, right. I guess like, we did maybe the Moist Boys did the Catalyst. Or the yeah, Green yeah, Green. yeah. I know the Dean Reader played there just last year. I wasn't able right. to go, though, unfortunately. I've been kind of stuck in bed lately. But hopefully that will change soon. Yeah. So uh, let me ask you about, um, well, we should go back to read a little bit in a minute, but... Um, about how you got into J Lab, Joe Russo, all those yeah. stuff. And like, how did that happen? And um, were you a big fan of the dead? Tell me about that. Um, I'm a fan of the dead. It wasn't one of my, wasn't my, one of my top bands, but yeah. uh, uh, I was a fan of the dead somewhat. Um, I didn't go that deep with it until having to learn all this music for J Rad. But I can't um, imagine. Cause that's, a, that's a lot of to, what's yeah it's a lot well uh one thing that got me in even uh even like was was uh Ween did Ween would do Stell blue occasionally oh yeah um, that's right. I remember having to uh I remember getting wake of the flood you know later in in, in I guess in the 90s to learn Stell blue and then being blown away by that record. And all their records now, you know, really. Yeah, yeah. I did see them when I was a teenager in 83, I think. Wow. I always I saw, remember them, the I saw them once in uh, 95, right before Jerry died. That's, right, one wow. time, that's the one time I got to see them. Yeah. I, I only saw them once also, but it was great. Yeah, you know, it's, it's funny. I've always had a mixed kind of like relationship with the dead i kind of like never liked them for a long long time and then for some reason i started like really listening to their live albums and just the dick pit stuff and all that yeah and, absolutely and, it, and i don't know it just kind of changed my mind and like I, I realized how eclectic they could be, and I don't know. I would say that there's just no other band that interplays with each other live the way the dead does. It's just, I don't know. There's something, yeah. something really unique about it. Yeah, they're, they, what they do is so special. And they're the only ones that can do that, you know. Yeah, so yeah. 
And the album for me, that, that kind of made me kind of, I don't know, like her a little more, was actually Blues for Allah, because it's very proggy. So proggy, right? It's like jazz, it's like jazz, electric jazz, like fusion, prog. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, that, that whole opening of like Flintstones Tower and all that, that shit. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, you know, they're pretty proggy. They have the English, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's a it's a thing. Yeah, having um you know, I I always listen to King Crimson and all these bands that played in odd time signatures and I never really played in a band that did that. Um and now having to learn all this Grateful Dead stuff, it made me better at to odd time signatures. Still hard, but uh So how did I, really I bet I bet. Yeah. So, like, how did and eleven and five. yeah? So, how did you even like dive into that? Like, learning all those songs because that just seems like so daunting. Practice for hours and hours a day. I bet. I bet. Yeah, I it's think I. Do. I think J Rad is amazing. Honestly, like, there's been a lot of dead cover bands. But there's something about the way that you guys do the like jazz fusion kind of like paint on it. I don't know. It's just awesome. Like I think you guys are by far the best dead band ever, besides the dead. Besides the dead, well, um, you know, we're a bunch of guys from New Jersey who really loved Led Zeppelin and and also like a lot of. A lot of proggy stuff and and the big jazz influence. So you you put that all together, it's like the perfect ingredients for the dead thing. But the the thing that separates us from other dead bands is that um, most of the guys in the band didn't listen to the dead that much. A couple did. That's um, interesting. That's interesting. So. Most of the dead bands that play, most of them are like dead fanatics. Yeah. Their main influence is, is the Grateful Dead. Exactly. So, so maybe that's what separates us from other bands. I can totally see that. That's actually yeah. Really cool. Yeah, it kind of makes sense in a weird way. You know, it's like it's a different approach. Guys that grew up with it, like, that love metal or punk rock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, we, you know, we, little, we, but also love psychedelic music and jazz and and the hey, Beatles. Hey, it's all good, man. I was in the punk rock. I was in the metal. I was in the prod. I, it's all good. Right. We, good we, music, right? Their music is good music. I've always said that. Well, uh, you know, the what Duke Ellington said. He said, there's two kinds of music, good music and the other. <laughs> and uh, whatever that is, right? Yeah, exactly. New kids on the bot, shit like that. Hey, if you like it. It's yeah, like exactly. It. I'm not going to talk shit. To each their own. That's exactly. That's, uh, the music that makes people feel good. And that's... <laughs> It's a beautiful thing, man. And that's why music is so amazing. It brings us all together. It makes us right. happy. I can't imagine life without music at all. Me and that, too. That's a life. I'm with you. Yeah, man. That's a life I don't want to be in. <laughs> uh, did you ever get into like metal and punk rock? Or? Oh, yeah. Yeah, what was oh, yeah. some of your favorite metal? Punk bands. Well, Motorhead. Awesome. The ultimate punk metal band. I'm not surprised to hear you say that, given that it's going to be a long night. It is a straight up Motorhead song. It is. It is. It's a, there's no. There's no hiding that. Yes. <laughs> not that that's a bad thing. What's that? I said not that that's a bad thing. No. We all need all the motorhead in our life, you know. That's, oh yeah, 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 yeah. So like, were you into Sabbath? Like, oh, I love Sabbath. Sabbath, um, 
deep purple. Of uh, I used to love rainbow. Rainbow is uh, awesome. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it sounds know, sounds like sounds like you and I have a lot of similar tastes. <laughs> and then there's Slayer. You know, oh, the greatest yeah. metal band of all time. Is that would you say so? Well, I mean, Motorhead's my favorite, but Slayer's pretty good, right? I, I love Slayer. Have you ever heard of Opeth? What is it? It's they're called Opeth. O p e t h. I don't know if I have. No, they they've been around for about twenty five years now. And uh, they're, in my opinion, one of the best of the newer metal bands since they play like a mix of really heavy like death metal, but then they'll also do it uh, like Pink Floyd kind of stuff at the same time. Sometimes, cool. sometimes in the same song. Nice. And they've got like. 50 and 60 albums, and then the last few albums they've done like straight 70s prod. Nice, wow! And I bet you really like them. You should check them out. Yeah, I'll have to check it out. They're actually from Sweden. <laughs> There's a lot of Swedish metal bands. Oh, yeah, and I love death, you know, love like Nordic death metal. Yeah, like. Or, or, uh, Emperor and like that kind of stuff. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I, I mean, they're all kinds of metal and plaid. Yeah. And it's cool mm -hmm. shit. <laughs> cool. Well, since we keep going back to plaid, tell me your, like, pick your five top plaid albums if you had to pick. Oh, my God. Okay. Well, all right. And I'll do the same. Um... That's, 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 the Court of the Crimson King, Lark's Tongues and Aspic, um, Foxtrot by Genesis. That's a great uh, one. Uh, Close to the Edge, and um, and Thick as a Brick. That's a good one. Man. That's good. I, I could have named all. F I could have named five Yes albums. Yeah, yeah, no, I hear that. I'd probably go with. Let's see. Well, it's not an aspect for sure. Um, I would go with Genesis. Fox Trot is amazing, but I'm also a huge fan of The Lamb. Lamb lies down on Broadway. Probably have to go with that. Selling England by the Pound. That's my other. Oh, that's, that's a good one, too. Man, I that, know, right? man, fuck. that whole run of nursery time through. Uh, lamb is just amazing. Amazing, right? Yeah, dude. And then I'd have to go with probably close to the edge. Oh, <laughs> probably close to the edge. Yeah. I, I, every Yes album. Tales. Between, you know. Topographic Oceans, too. Big one. Yeah. yeah. And, Three layer. Yeah, I love all that. Yeah, um, me too. Me too. And then uh let's see, maybe like have you ever heard anything by Neil Morse? No. You should check him out too, man. And a man called Transatlantic. There's uh this guy Neil Morse is um kind of one of the big neo prod guys. Of the last 20 years, and he's done like uh, all this amazing stuff. He actually started out in the 90s in a band called Fox Beard. Have you ever heard of them? Doesn't sound familiar, no. It's a pretty funny name. They got the name from the Star Trek episode where they like. Don't we do another dimension and there's an evil version of Spock and the only way that you could tell that it was the evil one was because he had a beard. So mm -hmm. they call it Spock's beard. Spock's beard, I've heard of them. I yeah. Heard. yeah, that's what I'm talking about. 
So this guy, Neil Miller, he started out in that band, and then he's done a bunch of solo shit, like, since then. And uh, most of his solo stuff has been with uh, Mike Portnoy. Oh, yeah. The drummer from Dream Theater. Yep. And, uh, yeah, they've done some amazing, amazing stuff together. And there's this other band called Trans Atlantic, which is like a super group of them and one of the guys from the British prog band Marillion. Have you ever heard of them? Marillion? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never really listened to them. I bet you would like them because when they started out, they sounded like straight up Peter Gabriel era Genesis. And then they got kind of more like uh, classic rock as they went along. They actually got a different singer about halfway through their career. And the bass player for that band is in this band, Transatlantic. And then this other guy is from the Swedish prog band that I bet you would also like a lot called the Flower Kings. Have you ever heard of them? No. Yeah, they're, they're awesome. There's like a lot of amazing prod that's come out like in the yeah. last 25, 30 years. Yeah, I, I uh, <laughs> but, there's, so, know, there's so much music There's there. so much music oh. out there, I know, dude. It's like, how do you ever have enough time for anything, right? Right. I just practice Grateful Dead music all the time. That's a uh, <laughs> That's awesome, man. So, uh, while you guys were on break, I guess Will Reed hasn't been doing much, and Jay Land hasn't been doing a whole lot. Have yeah. you guys um, talked about recording or anything? Well, all, all of our dates got pushed to next year, but now that's... That's hard to say, right? It's hard to say. Yeah. Everything's up in the air, so there is a... Um, J Rad's doing some shows next week um, that'll be broadcast from the Capitol Theater. I mean, yeah. um, you, can, you have to edit that out, Jesse. I will. I will. Well, we have a so we have a, we're supposed to do this festival lock in. Oh yeah. And they they're moving it, but they haven't announced that yet. So okay, um, okay. Well. So, so we'll be doing a broadcast, uh, but it may be by the time you put this up, it'll be broad because they're supposed to announce it tomorrow or something. Okay, well, I'll definitely look for it. Uh, Gene Lab hasn't ever put out a uh, studio album, have they? No, but um, a lot of our, most of our shows are available. Yeah, I think some of them are on Spotify and everything. Yeah, so, no, there's, a, there's a bunch on YouTube. They're all over the place for sure. Yeah, there's tons on YouTube. But I think there's actually, they actually release shows on Spotify. Okay. They're actually, um, yeah, so it's kind of wild. But no, no studio record. Have you guys um, ever talked about maybe doing something? Like some experimental kind of like jazz band hybrid band? Maybe some original music somewhere down the line, but not. Yeah. No, I, not really. Everybody's got, everybody in that band has their own projects and records and puts yeah, out yeah. records. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you been working on any solo stuff? Or? Uh, not really. I did a couple of... Um, I did a couple of solo concerts online. Uh, did one in June and one in May, and uh, just just laying low. Not yeah, not really working on practicing a lot. Yeah, I, work on jazz stuff and different things. You know, I I forget. Did you play on the um, Dean Reed albums? Yeah. I'm on. I'm on. I'm on both of them. Yeah. 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 Do you think you guys might do another album soon? Or? You know, I don't know. Um, you know, uh, we'll see. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I love those albums. They're great. Yeah, they're fun, right? Yeah, they're really good. They're really rocking, and uh, it's really cool to hear Mickey like go off on yeah. solo on solo guitar. You know. Yeah, right, right. 
Yeah, it's great, right? Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, in my opinion, he's like, I've always said that Dean Lee and Billy Turgid are my two favorite guitarists of um, 90s alternative rock. Wow. Even though they sound way different. But, uh, yeah, those albums are great, so I hope they... Cool. Yeah, I hope, yeah, I hope he keeps doing them, and uh, I hope Ellen puts something out sometime. Yeah, that'd be great. That, that would be great. That Freeman, that that, that Freeman album blows my mind. It's so good. It's like Paul McCartney almost. Yeah, but but more psychedelic. Yeah, uh, nice. Yeah, man. Well, right on, Dave. I uh, I, I, hope, I hope I haven't talked to you in the off too long. It was kind of fun just having a loose conversation about Absolutely. music and history and all that. And yeah, I'm, thanks. Thanks for all the information about all those other bands. I'm gonna have to, have to check it out, Transatlantic and stuff. Yeah, I know. I I think that's gonna be one of my main issues. Is uh talking too much when I'm interviewing people. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> you keep talking, Chess. I'll listen. All right, man. I appreciate it, Dave. Well, uh, this was awesome, and I'll stay in touch, man. Have a good one. Thanks for having me as your first guest. Uh, Dude, thank honor. you. I really appreciate it. It's an honor Great for to see you, Chess. You're one of my favorite bass players of all time, man. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, man. All right, Dave. Have a good night, buddy. Great. You too, Jesse. Take, Take care. care. That was awesome. That was fun, right? Yeah, it was a lot of fun, cool. Dave. Have cool. a good night, man. Yeah, you too, bud. All right. Take care. Good to see you. You too.